Welcome back to Flutter Game, guys. We're going to be doing the top five most overrated players. Lauren, start us off. Yeah, this is sucks. You're basically forced to hate on some guys. Yeah. And honestly, yeah, no, it really sucks to make because, I mean, they're all NBA players and they're good. I just had to put at my number five, uh, if you're watching, which you're likely not, but hey, no hate, man. I'm going to put Jalen Green at – yeah, Jalen Green from the Rockets because he a lot of hype of him going into the league. Um, a lot of it died down just because the Rockets aren't good and they have a lot of issues within that team, within the organization. But personally for him, just like kind of what you see from him, he seems to lack a lot of discipline, kind of maturity, leadership, and just kind of really being an overall team player. It looks like he's chucking up shots. He does not do it at a good rate, really. He's a uh, I mean, last season he wasn't horrible. From, I mean, I mean he kind of was actually. Yeah, I mean he was a thirty-three percent three-point shooter, not very good at all. He shoots just over. He shot just over forty percent field goals last season. This season he's shooting under forty percent field goals while having now a point guard, which a lot of people thought would boost his uh efficiency. It does not seem to have that effect. He's really athletic and he can make tough shots. Like you know, he has all the raw skills. So for me. A type of uh, player comparison, honestly, is J.R. Smith, right? You have that flashiness you can make, right? You have athleticness. You you can make tough finishes. But there's kind of just a lack of uh, consistency. Yeah. And there's just a lack of really being able to, to truly take over and uh, always make the smart play. So that's kind of my comparison, I would say, is J.R. Smith. And I'm not even trying to say J.R. Smith is overrated by any means. But I just feel like Jalen Green has a lot more people like, oh, he could still be – that guy and jr smith never was i know hate to jr he was he was great yeah so that's my number five i mean any 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 disagreements or any comments further on to that um yeah i, I mean i'm kind of with you i i mean i don't know how overrated he is but uh in terms of like i think a lot of people uh weren't aren't as high on him this year as past years but um but he just the thing i noticed from him he doesn't get easy looks and that's not from that's just from lack of trying he doesn't look he doesn't you know take advantage of the easy opportunities he he's flashy he, 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 he likes that he kind of yeah. likes that because he can make them but yeah. just it's not the best shot yeah it's like jr smith honestly like he, you know he does that stuff he's just shooting over people fading away yeah i mean yeah. there no more comments i guess we can go to marvin's number five um i mean this one Probably isn't really accurate anymore. He hasn't seen much minutes this season, but he did start last season, so I put Dwight Powell on there. I don't think he was deserving of a starting center spot. Uh, last don't hate season. on the go. They had JaVale McGee. I think he would have been better to start. Um, but like I said, I don't think it's really valid anymore. He hasn't seen the court too much. He doesn't really start anymore, so it's probably not super valid anymore, but at least ending last season, I don't I don't think he was the starter uh, five for any team in the NBA. Um, but yeah, I mean I don't I don't love the pick either, but I mean he, he kind of reminds me of that guy when you're like playing my career and you're like in college or whatever and you just have the most random center and his name's like <laughs> Bartholomew or something. I don't know. Like that's what he reminds me of. He's just like the most basic like and he doesn't really do a lot of good stuff. Yeah, he just, he just stands there. Yeah, I don't know. He's, he's not like a super negative, but by not really being good at not even really uh, one thing, he's yeah. just not really. And and good. the Mavs, the Mavs can't win with him being their starter. Um, I mean, we saw that last year. I don't think well, last year was on Dwight Powell. Uh, he certainly didn't help it. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's good for the Mavs now that they got lively. I mean, lively is. I mean, like, it, for a rookie, he's good. But, like, in terms of, like, in the average center, I, I mean, he's he's probably average. You know, he he's good at rebounding. He's good at blocking shots. But he doesn't have a ton of crazy skill. He's an all right passer. Um, But, yeah, but it's just such a big improvement. Like, you could know you have a noticeable improvement. And I think that just shows uh, Dwight Powell's lack of doing stuff, you know. Yeah, um, I mean. With yeah, I think he's literally. I mean, no one. I don't think no one actually overrates him, but I think he's overrated by the Mavericks. The fact that he was getting those minutes in that starting spot for so long is just. I don't know what the Mavericks were thinking. I don't know if they thought he was the next star at 32 years old. Um, I don't know he's if one they of the longest going as athletic. Sorry, true, true, but it's a, I, I don't know. I feel like there's some. I, I don't know. The Mavs seem to really like their guy Dwight Powell, which hey, 
he's great to have as your second or third center, but let, let's take it down a notch here. Sorry, Mass fans, but Dwight Powell is not him. Yeah. Uh, Deacon, who's your five? All right, my five um, is someone I had on my top 10 under 25. You barely squeak in. I'm going with Lamella Ball. Um, uh, I mean, before the year, I, I didn't have – I mean, I had confidence that he could uh, do some stuff in terms of like – I mean, the, the the Hornets last year had a disappointing year. He was out for a lot of it. Uh, last time he was healthy, they were a 41 team or so. Um, and I, I was hoping that he could take that step and lead them to at least a playing spot. Um, early on in the series, he's really struggled. He, he doesn't do the stuff that you uh, need in, from a star player in terms of he doesn't s- seek out contact. And uh, he, he kind of avoids it. He doesn't get a lot of free throws. I mean, we've seen games where he does, but... I mean, this year he's shooting 30% from the field. You know, it's just, it's egregious. Um, And hopefully it's just a bad start. But um, I, I just don't think he's on the level of the guys that we have been putting him on uh, on with, like with the Tyrese Maxis, with the Halliburns, um, even with Trey Young. I mean, Trey Young's not shooting well from the field, but it's better than, it's better than LaMelo thus far. And um, Any thoughts? Uh, no, I agree. I was actually thinking of putting him at like five two, just because, especially right now, he's not on it at all. Yeah. So I can't, I can't, definitely can't disagree with that take, especially this far into the season. Um, it hasn't obviously been much, but he has not been the same player that we're kind of used to seeing him. So I, I can't disagree or argue that uh spot for him. I think he's um, definitely so- been the most disappointing player this year. Sorry, go ahead. Um, so Lauren doesn't look happy. I don't know if it's like uh he agrees or he doesn't at all. Lauren, what are you thinking right now? I hate it. I hate it a lot. But based on this season, you're not wrong at all because he sucks, <laughs> which I hate. But I do think I, I, I believe my boy, I mean, just like talent wise, like it's there and I feel like he's he, we've seen him like have hype from a young age. I think like well he's looking to get better. So based on this season, yes, he sucks. You had him top five, right? For your under twenty five. Um, probably. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I still believe maybe he won't be top five, but I, I mean, I don't think Lamelo Ball is is looking at remaining at a thirty percent field goal kind of guy throughout the rest of his career. Um, again, a guy that hasn't gotten to see the court healthy a lot of times. Again, a guy that's playing with uh, what's their the coach's name? Who's I don't think a good coach. We'll be playing with the Hornets, who have been historically, as of the last decade or so, a not a good organization. They have struggles off the court currently and last season, the season before. Michael Jordan stepped down as the owner because he wasn't great. I'm going to give this guy a little bit of a break. He sucks. He's got a lot of things to clean up right now, but the talent is undoubtedly there. You guys can say he's overrated, and that's all fine. You can even hate on him, but the talent, we got we got to admit, he, I mean, he, it's, it's certainly there. Yeah. Shout out Brandon Miller though. Uh Valentin, who's your who's your guy? Uh my guy is Zion Williamson. Mm. You know, mm. he got all the hype. He's healthy. He's gonna be top five. He's gonna be top ten. He ain't even top thirty right now, healthy. So I don't know. He's just not that So uh, what makes you say this? He just hasn't been anything special right now. Like I don't know. He's not showing those top guy stats, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, what, do you, what do you got to say, Lauren? Zion Williamson, he's not showing top guy stats. I mean, I'll take you to the first example that comes to mind. And this is this is a preseason, mind you, but he had five steals in, in the first half. Not to mention the Pelicans or what. They have, what, one loss? Loss, losses? They're one of the best teams in the league and in the West right now, even when they're not always healthy. Like, He's kind of meant a pretty big deal to this team. He's shooting the ball 50% clip right now as far as efficiency. Um, I mean, I feel like he's got more potential. So I can see what you're saying, but I don't know. Based off like right now, based on the first five games, he's not like insane. So I guess you can say overrated as far as that, but I don't think anyone's really big on him. But like he's winning and he's playing good basketball. Like he's still averaging over 20 points a game. He's doing it at 50% field goal efficiency, and he's he's doing everything they need him to do, and I feel like he's still going to bring a lot more to the table. Yeah. yeah. He's 53rd in the league right now for triples, 32nd in the league for points per game, 53rd in rebounds per game, and tied in 21st for assists. 
Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as standard Zion standards go, um, this is kind of similar to Lamelo, but he's obviously not having as bad of the year as Lamelo. He's not been, you know, up to Zion standard, but he just missed like fifty games last year. He hasn't played basketball in a while. He kind of looks out of shape, or not out of shape. He looks like he's not quite in game shape, uh, but he's getting there. Um, but I mean, I I think he's I like his passing thus far has been great. Um, I he, he's rebounding well. I don't know. I mean, I. I'm not going to call him overrated by any means, just because I think he's working his way back. But um, yeah, he hasn't been as he hasn't been top five. I mean, a lot of people were picking him for MVP, and that hasn't happened yet. But it's still early on. Yeah, I I think part of it too is like you said, he missed a lot last season. He might got to shape a little bit too. But I think part of it too is right now he knows. I mean, he realizes they're winning games. Um, they're pretty healthy, so I don't think he is thinking to himself, "Hey, I need to go." drop 30 points and get eight rebounds, eight assists. So I think he's trying to keep his workload on the court a little lower to lower his injury risk right now of him not even playing for the team. And, I mean, we saw he rested on the back-to-back game a few days ago as well. So I think part of it, too, is just he's trying to injury manage himself, too. So without playing as hard as he normally would, he hopefully won't get hurt um, or miss as many games due to an injury this season. Yeah. Marvin, did you give your number five yet? I, I think you did. I yeah. Who was uh, it? It's your turn. Who was your number five, Marvin? I just want to remember. Dwight Powell, bro. Oh, yeah, the goat. Yeah, you said. Yeah. Anyway, my number four is um, Jared Allen. So, Jared Allen is coming off a bat. Also, oh, I was a huge Jared Allen fan when he was coming to the league with the Nets. I, I really am. I still I still, I still, like him, but as far as like a player on the court, he has got to be overrated. He, um, the defensive rating, I mean, the Cavs were the number one team in defensive rating last season. He missed 14 games. The defensive rating did not, like, it's literally almost identical with him playing and him not playing. Um, So, uh, despite being a good shot blocker, doesn't add a whole lot to defensive range to a team that is already good at defense. He's certainly their defensive anchor. Offense, he does not have a shot. It is non-existent. Doesn't really have post moves. He's a dunker. We have two other centers like that. Um, but he isn't that great at rebounds either. And he can do that. That's all fine and dandy. But we missed him, especially in the playoff last season, kind of effort-wise and putting it up. I just think, like, he's a center. He's fine to have on your team. But there's a lot that... The, the, he does a few things he brings well. He's missing, and the team without him seems to do just fine. Yeah. I mean, I'll say this uh, once again. I think the Cavs – I don't think they're I, – I don't think Jared Allen is a negative on the court. I'm not saying that by any means. I think he's a really solid player. He's a great defender. I um, but I think they're better when Evan Mobley is at the center position. I mean, offensively, at least. Um, and then defensively, Evan Mobley can hold his own just fine. Um, I mean, it just the spacing doesn't work. I mean, I think Evan Mobley can be a uh, power forward just next to a center that can shoot the basketball. But yeah, uh, I mean, Jared Allen just doesn't provide a lot offensively. He's kind of your your uh, lob it up guy. He's kind of like DeAndre Jordan, you know. Um, in that way, I mean, he I mean he had a really effective year. Uh, he made an All Star team, but he just hasn't he hasn't lived up to that standard since Mobley came. Um, and obviously he's only played one game this year, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, last year, last year, there wasn't really a huge difference in my eyes, uh, with Allen in the game and him not in the game. Yeah, I agree. I think it's kind of, I mean, he's, he's definitely better than Powell, but I think it's kind of that kind of effect. He doesn't really do, uh, have much of an effect on and off the court. Uh, like I said, he's obviously better. His defense is better. He's just more of a threat on the court in terms of rebounding and even scoring in some sense. But I agree. I feel like he has he, – people expect more of him than what he does when he plays. So I'm not against that uh, call at all. Don't ever compare him to Dwight Powell. Yeah, that was kind of weird. That yeah. was like the meanest thing you could have ever done to Jared Allen. That was mean Dwight Powell. Huh? That was mean to Dwight Powell. <laughs> <laughs> I go. I can't continue, Valentin. 
No, that's just all I have to say. Don't ever compare him to Clive Powell. That is absurd. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously that, that was weird, uh, the Dwight Powell comparison. I, I kind of got what you're saying in terms of he's not – I mean – I mean, obviously, he's a positive on the court. Uh, just how much of a positive is he? Um, and does his offensive – what's the word? Unversatility? Is there a word for that? The lack of offensive versatility kind of kills at least the Cavs vibe offensively. Um, All right, next. Marvin, I think. Yeah. I believe so. Marvin. Give us number four, um, baby. My number four, he's actually been doing pretty good this season. I think part of that is Simons is out. But based off the contract he got during the offseason, I put Jeremy Grant on this list. Um, especially based off what he was doing in the past season or two, he, in my eyes, was not worth that contract right now. Um, I love the man, great player, but I feel like he was definitely overpaid. And that is part of the reason why I put him on this list. I don't think he is that kind of player to deserve that money right now. Um, he's been a lot better this season than he was last season, but to get that money before he was there in the point of his career, I think was part of what put him as an overrated player for me. Yeah, yeah, he almost made my list. I also am coming off a, 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 a bad night with him because I took the under on him on my bet because that's what he's been doing every single game. And he decided to just not go under this time because it was a playing tournament and he went over time. But anyway, the guy, he is not – I mean, yeah, he just got paid a lot of money. He's a pretty good defender, pretty versatile. Um, I wouldn't say he's anything insane, uh, but he's pretty good. And he can score the ball, but, like, I don't know. He just kind of does kind of everything. can rebound a little bit, but he's not a really great rebounder, especially for a power forward. Um, he's definitely on the lower end of rebounding. He's not particularly really a playmaker. And he can score the ball decently well, but he's obviously not going to be really one of your top two. He shouldn't be relied on as one of your top two scorers, generally, I would say, on a competing team. So he's just kind of a, a weird fit. I could see him being an amazing player, type of Trevor Reed type of guy, on a contending team if he takes, obviously, a huge pay cut and if he's, like, the number four on your team. Mm. Uh, so as far as that, I because he, he, he can shoot the ball. He can score the ball when you need him to. He's not a lead at that. And he can like he can play defense, so that that that's where I'm seeing that. I I do think he's overpaid. Um, I mean, I, I mean, a lot of people are getting overpaid. Uh, I mean, whenever you're a free agent, it's your time to get the next, you know, big contract, and people are going to get overpaid. Uh, but I think Jer Jeremy Grant still brings a lot to the table. Um, and like kind of like what Lawrence said, I think Trevor Le uh, oh Trevor Ariza was a little far. But I think like an air. Ariza was really good, dude. But that's like yeah, not he was he was more reduced to a catch and shoot type guy. He was he was a good three and D guy. Not I, throughout I, all his career. That was towards the end of the Rockets because of the Rockets played basketball. But he wasn't. I, I don't think he was ever as good as Jeremy Grant. And uh, either way, um, uh, I think in an Aaron Gordon type role uh, with Denver. I mean, he, we saw him in that role when they went to the conference finals, and he was really good. Um, I think in that similar role, kind of as like the fourth option, um, he can handle the ball a little bit, cut, you know, uh, be next to a great passer. I think he'd be really useful in that role. Uh, you know, he doesn't have to create as much on his own. But yeah, the contract is probably what makes him overrated for sure. Any thoughts, Valentin? Uh, no. Fair enough. All, All right. My next guy is... Uh, a lot of people, I think, have jumped off the Jordan Poole bandwagon, um, but I I'm going to just put him on here. He has not been good this year, or he has not been up to my expectation. He's only averaging around 17, 40% shooting. Um, the assist numbers aren't crazy high. Um, he's kind to – I mean, we saw, like, the stats last year when he started. He averaged, like, 26. That's what everyone was kind of expecting. Um, I, I even made a claim that he might win the scoring title this year. It's It, it has been the total opposite thus far. Um, I mean, it's not shooting good shots. Uh, we saw that clip of Denny Avdia kind of like really pissed at him. <laughs> we saw him do that move against Porzingis, and then he just gets blocked immediately. Um, I don't know his his role is kind of. I, I think he's best as like you know the six man role that he played with the Warriors. Um, and now that we see him as like the star of the, of the team, he's just he's not living up to his expectations. 
a little bit like a like a Jalen Green kind of guy. He's got all the skill, yeah. but so much discipline, and he just kind of wants to take. He wants to make the highlight play, right? Yeah. He's always filming a highlight. He's always looking to make the highlight play, and mm-hmm. even for that standard, I like you said, I wasn't big on him, and he just been disappointing. Yeah, to to, to even my standard, I thought just with that opportunity he will get, he would still put up like he would still do some some more than he has been. Mm-hmm. Good pick. Yeah, he's just – he's young right now. He should be trying to prove himself and prove others why he deserves this spot and why he can be great. But he's just playing around right now out there. He's not taking it serious, it seems, at all. It, it's just bad, man. I think the problem is the fact that he's trying to do exactly that, and that's why he's forcing some of these bad shots – and trying to do everything himself is because he wants to try and prove to people that he is that guy, but he is not succeeding at all right now. Yeah, I don't think he's blocked from the pool then, man. He, he's doing like, he's like spinning around, doing weird yeah. stuff, and then gets blocked by Chris after he takes a lazy shot. Like, we need more, like, we need more baddies in Washington, apparently. But. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, I think we should number four. Uh, we're not allowed to do rookies, right? We can. Nah, I don't care. I mean, we had Miller on the underrated, so. I got Jordan Hawkins. That dude's been terrible. Uh, just real quick, just real quick, I want to say how good of my Miller pick. I mean, I kind of nailed that, but go ahead, Mountain. Uh, Jordan Hawkins has been the worst of the worst, man. That dude has done nothing for the Pelicans. He is terrible at shooting right now. He's just nothing right now, honestly. I don't even know what to say about him. He's just terrible. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what he finished with, but against OKC, uh, in that Pelicans win, I I, I feel like he missed like ten threes. It was bad, um, and a lot of them were open. You know, correction, he missed eleven threes. Oh shucks, my bad, my bad, Jordan. But um, yeah, I mean, I I mean, it's obviously early in his career. He's a rookie. He's he's not looked good. His defense isn't good. His offense hasn't been good. Um. Kind of just looks a step slow out there, um, but we'll see if he can turn it around. Yeah, yeah. I want to give him. Uh, so he's he's been super dog poo poo the last yeah. two games. The yeah. first two games of the season, he had actually fifty percent three point shooting. So we see those flashes, and I guess we're so used to rookies coming in and being good, yeah. even more so this season, right? With uh, Wembanyama and shit, like we're and we've just been getting more used to it over the last few seasons. But like. If you keep in mind, like it used to kind of be rookies were, or most of the time got more of a slower introduction yeah. um into the league unless you were like top ten pick really, but even then some of them. Uh but I would say, man, yeah, sure. Uh you can call him overrated, but no one's super hyped on him right now. I would say give him some time. He had two good games. We still see those flashes and he had some really, really bad games. Yeah. Um but he's a rookie. I'm just gonna give him a break. It's it's been five games. Yeah, wow. I'm with Lauren on this too. I mean, he's young. He I mean he did was the 14th pick is pretty good pick, but I don't think he really had that much hype around him either. Um, but he, I mean, he's definitely shooting, I think, too many shots right now, too, especially with his percentage. But overall, I mean, I don't think you can quite put him on this yet just because of his age and what, I feel like there wasn't that much expected of him going into this season. Um, I think part of that even, too, was, at least for me, I mean, you didn't even really know if he was going to get minutes slash how many minutes he was going to get going into the season. So yeah. well, the expectation was he's gonna be like Gigi Reddick. And that's how we said it too. He's been nothing Yeah, oh. career wise, but not first five games. Not most people don't they didn't expect him to go in there being JJ okay. Reddick the greatest shooter of all time. 11 threes. That means games. shooting a lot. He can't hit his shots. Uh. True, but I mean I don't know what the coach is telling him and it could be like, hey yo bro, you're shooting I mean, shoot the shot, keep shooting, bro. And I, I would mean, expect him. I, I watched that game against OKC. Um and a lot of the shots were just butt naked open. Just couldn't hit him. Um but so he's gotta shoot those. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's been rough. But yeah, obviously he's a rookie. I I I've no doubts. Well maybe not no doubts. I have little doubt that he will turn it around. Agreed. Agreed. You're up on. All righty, man. Number three, baby. We're going to go Carl Anthony Towns. This man is ranked in the top 20 by ESPN. I don't know if that's a general opinion. Um, I know that the hype has gone down around his name over the last season or two uh, because he consistently doesn't have postseason success. 
He is not successful. He puts up big numbers all the time. He's not a great team player. And I, as far as from what we know about Jimmy Butler when he was there seasons ago, um, he and from what even what he says, he seems to have goals of making the play-in tournament rather than making a championship, as he has claimed that that was a bigger deal than the Nuggets winning a championship. So if that's your goal, it shows. And I do, I, I personally believe that's his mindset. Like he doesn't look like the talent said, but he doesn't look like he he gets it. He doesn't look like he really puts in the effort. Um, like he goes out there, he wants to shoot a three. He's like great shot. He's got all this talent. But like he doesn't put it together, man. He he just doesn't. He, he yeah. absolutely does, and not to mention last season, the team was better offensively when he did not play. Yeah. I mean, the, he, just, he has to apply himself, he has to put in the work, and he has to kind of understand the game. Like, I, I, he's he's a gifted playmaker, I feel like, but at the same time, he's greatly lacking in IQ. Yeah. I mean, so he's, he's I've only averaging 17 on 37% shooting. He was also my number three, so we could kill two birds with one stone here. Um, yes, sir. I mean, we saw, I mean, like, I, I think it was like five years ago, there was like a GM survey. It was like, who would you rather build your franchise around? Carl Anthony Towns, LeBron, or Kevin Durant? And everyone chose Carl Anthony Towns, you know? He, I mean, he was like the guy. And he scored like 60 a couple years ago. I mean, it just, I mean, maybe it's the Gobert pairing, but he's been pretty ineffective, uh, you know, the past couple of years. Um, it's just disappointing to see. Yeah, I agree. I have him on my list too, but he's not my number three. Mm. Valentin, what do you think? Um, you know, he won the three point contest. Everyone had this hype around him, like Warren said, and his goal is retarded right now. That I man is just freaking stupid, honestly. There's nothing more to add to that. Yeah. So Marvin, what's your number three? My number three uh is DeMontis Sabonis um I I feel like he's over I mean he was put into the MVP race last season obviously like 10 through 12 or whatever but I don't think he is that caliber of a player um he does he has great stats I think he might be one of the more stat padding kind of players in the NBA but I do not think he's a top 12 player in the NBA I don't think he should have been in the MVP race um his I I don't think he's that valuable to a team. I feel like he is a more easily replaceable player. Uh, all, right. all right, all right, all right, all right. I won't want to talk. I won't put something out there because I know you're gonna lose your mind. Because like, but here's here's the thing though. Against Marvin, you would love Darren Fox, and he led the Kings. You would know why the Kings are so good because Demontis Sabonis came there. He's a man averaging more assists than Darren Fox. He's the one that anchors that offense. He's the one that gets the shooters open. So. For one, he's not overrated. Um, I almost want to put him on the list, but just because of a simple fact, he can't. One of the best offenses in the league, one of the, I think, second most, like, top five assists, I'm pretty sure. And uh, because the bonus anchored that offense. And, yes, in the playoffs, he was not great. That's why I kind of wanted to put him on my list, too. So, I, like, I almost did, but then I was like, dude, hold on, hold on, hold on. This man, Darren Fox, was amazing, but he was not the leader of that offense. Don't get it twisted. Number three is absurd. My goodness. First of all, he's not overrated in any way. Especially not number three in the league. Hmm? I'm interested in who else there is if you got Sabonis at number three, man. Well, so uh, explain your thought process, Valentin. Have you – what Lauren just said. Have you seen Sabonis play? Yeah. He's still a top ten rebounder in the league. He can score pretty efficiently. And he's the best playmaker right now on the Kings. All right. So I'm going to not necessarily come to Marvin's defense, but uh, I don't think it's that ridiculous of a take. Well, so, so, well, what you said, he, he doesn't, I can't remember exactly what you said. He, you said he's kind of one of the more stat padding players. Um, I think he has a tremendous impact on the Kings, like Lauren said. Um, he is that engine to the offense, but I can understand. Um, yeah, he wasn't a top 10 player last year, uh, like the MVP voting suggests. He he did struggle in the playoffs quite a bit. Um, I, I, he, I think he was kind of exposed. His defense isn't great. But in terms of what makes that Kings offense go, it's DeMontis Sabonis. Um, and I think if you put like – like I like the other day, I, I made a proposed trade, uh, like Joel Embiid to the Kings, and you guys brought up a great point. Uh, that offense would totally change. 
you know, because MB or uh, not MB Sabonis's playmaking ability is what helps that offense go. He gets shooters open. Is he's a great screen center, great roller, uh, can finish around the basket with his left hand. Um, yeah, I mean, so it just depends on. I don't think he's. I I mean, you could say he's slightly overrated, but he's not ridiculously overrated. I don't think he's number three in the league at all. Um, but yeah, it's fair. Uh, Val, Deacon, you're three. Are you? I guess you already have. Yeah, Valentine three. OG Anunoby. Um, he has been nothing but terrible. Like his expectations for the Raptors was really high. He's really done nothing impressive, I think, uh, for them. When you pull up the stats mm-hmm. real quick for especially this season. Yeah. Um. Here, I got them. I mean, so he's right. averaging uh, 14 and a half on 58% shooting, which is pretty good. Um, Three rebounds, an assist. Um, Shoot, what's his defensive stats? One block one point, and one and a half, 1.4 steals. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of get what you're saying. Um, Like the Raptors were asking for like four first round picks for him. Ridiculous. I mean, I, I think in terms of what how the Raptors value him, he's overrated. I still think he's an extremely uh, valuable piece. Um. You know, one of the best three and D guys in the league. Um, yeah, I, I definitely don't think he's top three unless overrated. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Maybe the Raptors overrated, but overall, I don't I don't think a lot of hype around him. But if you put that guy right as kind of a, a, a weapon on a on a better team or you're right, for example, let's say he were to go to the Lakers, I feel like that would be he would be become extremely valuable to that team as the kind of score he he is and the type of defender he is so I, I think he's extremely valuable and i don't see him getting overrated or overhyped in any sense for that yeah I, I agree i mean the asking price i can see that too but i feel like overall too he doesn't get especially because the last season or two as well he hasn't been that great so i feel like he doesn't really have that much hype and talk around his name uh anymore besides maybe his trade value and like you said, how the Raptors value him, but I feel like besides that, there's not too much uh, yeah. talk, especially of how great he is uh, right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, Lauren, what's your number two? All right, man. I am. I got two guys. I don't know who where I want to put where I want to put who, and both of these are gonna be get, get some heat. I'm I'm confident about it. I am very confident they will both get some heat. Okay. I am gonna go. With all right, I'm gonna put Joel Embiid as my second overrated player of the league, and this is a simple, simple, not based off talent. This is simple. Based two birds and one stone. Two birds and one stone. I got it too. Marvin's got number two, and B he's got me. Um, which means he got Cavs number one, which Loki I, I think is a great number one to have. Maybe I should have Cavs number one, but Embiid has got to be in the top five overrated player of the league. He has to be, and this is exactly not because he's not talented. He's insanely talented, but he is. Just one MVP, meaning he is the most valuable player in the league, most valuable player to his team. That's what that means. He's ranked number three by most people, top three by ESPN. He is not that. The statistically, what? the team the statistically the team is better. Yes. They score more points per game despite having and missing. Hey, the, is uh, is OKC okay better without Shea? The scoring title leader, and that's is the okay, better game. without Shea. Everyone says like the math. Well, they, well, he scores thirty points a game. How would they score more? Well, that's not how basketball works. There's pieces. There's chemistry. And Bead is a guy that has shown he does not show up in play. He does, does he show up in, in playoff games? No. Does he choke in half of them? Yeah. Is he super talented? Yeah. But guess what? The, the his one dimensional play doesn't translate because you have to have a more complete game. You've got to learn. Hey. I'm gonna have to pass him well more. If he if he had Jokic IQ, Joel Embiid would heck yeah. He would be the best player. He'd be better than Nikola Jokic if he had the same passing ability. Yeah, if but he had he like does, one of the greatest IQs of all time, yeah, he would be an amazing player. I I, I just feel like gonna, the, the point is this. The point is this. You add team value by being able to understand the sport. If you don't you don't become one of the greatest basketball players by just scoring a lot of points. Name three players. But that's players like all he does. Well. Name three players better play. than Joel. Giannis and Jokic. Who else? Giannis. Jokic uh, and Steph Curry. I would much rather Steph Curry is better. Would adds more value to a team 
than Joel Embiid does. Okay, but my, Jokic no, is, okay, name another one. Five. Luka Doncic. No. No. Luka Doncic adds more value to a team than Joel Embiid does. Joel Embiid has great defense. Luka has zero. Not Luka true. Not have his defense, defense is underrated. Way. His defense is yeah. left on. Dude, give me a break. Um, his haters, yeah. man, that is crazy. You guys know. I mean, he just won MVP just by that simple fact. I mean, I think everyone agrees he is. Yeah, not after, yeah. He's still but not my player. Let's not act like everyone. Like, I mean, I think there's a bit of revisionist history here. A lot of people were. I mean, obviously he got voted in as the MVP. All of a sudden, everyone's like, "Oh yeah, Jokic should have been it the whole time." That's just because of the playoffs. It's revisionist history. Embiid was still an amazing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Dude, what are you talking about? Whoa, whoa. dude, Most Embiid was elite in the regular season. I think yeah. all of us picked Embiid to win MVP. Yeah, yeah, obviously he won, but mo- I mean, I for one, and a lot of people are like, yeah, he didn't really deserve it. Yeah, he's scoring. That's what I'm saying. He's scoring a lot of points. He's playing good defense, but like, yo, you're not, you don't mean as much to your team. You're not leading the oh, yeah. number one offense because I, I do agree. you're scoring Joker- points and assisting. That's not, I mean, that's not what he's doing. Right. His won. team is scoring more points, guys. Like, this is the number. More okay. points per game. But you can't despite take this missing tiny sample size and just points. say the team is better without him. It, it, it makes no sense. you got to take in strength of schedule. You know, every game is different. And if you're telling me you would rather go out with the Sixers without Embiid, I think you're freaking crazy. I'm, I, wait, I'm not saying he's a negative to his team. I'm saying he's overrated. Guys, like, like that's insane. I never said let's cut him bead. I said he's overrated, guys. Like the, the fact that you're losing your mind right now. The team is somehow statistic. I'm not saying they, they should get rid of Embiid. They should just hey, let's put him on the bench. Let's not play him. But somehow, despite having this insanely talented score, which he is, but this speaks to basketball. The is pieces he? and IQ of basketball. Uh-uh. Which shows the statistics show he doesn't have because when he doesn't play, the team is good. You can also watch them. The eye test. There's way more fluid basketball. The guys look more comfortable. I don't. I don't think they hate you. He's a great like team guy. This is not his play style. That's the that. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I have a couple things to say. Is Joel first of all in your top ten, Lauren? Yeah. Okay. I do agree. Jokic should have won MVP. But in my personal opinion, Joel is still top five player in the league. That's not very overrated, especially not second in the league. Yeah. I, I think we're – a little overrated, but yeah, not second th- in the league is absurd. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people, you know, we were comparing him to Jokic all, all year long, and he won MVP over Jokic. Um, I mean, first of all, I, I picked Giannis as my MVP, so I'm kind of in the weird boat here. Um, But I still had Jokic – I mean, uh, Embiid at number two. I thought I thought he was amazing last year. He had clutch shot after clutch shot in the regular season. He I mean, he had amazing performances. And then yeah, he, he's not a great playoff performer. That's that's just something that he struggles with. But to say he's the number two over overrated player in the league, uh, to to suggest that the 76ers are better without him, it's just it's just pure. It it, it, it doesn't make sense. I do. I I mean I literally said word for word. I'm not saying they're better. The thing oh, is, but you you keep bringing up that stat. Because yes, because doesn't that, isn't that is that not insane? Is that not ridiculous? So let's let's, let's take a look at let's take a deep look at what value it brings and how good he should be to his team. Because if you take off any other player in the in the, in the top five off their teams, that team would a hundred percent not be uh, looking but like the same. What you're team. saying right now is that so what I'm saying is he takes up a lot of touches on his on on his team and he puts he averages thirty four points a game. I, that exactly is... because he has he has a ten percent higher usage rate than Nikola Jokic. Which that's just fine. for comparison, this one is that's what I'm saying. It's basketball, right? It's basketball. So you give a player, if you give a player 60%, like let's do some math here. If you give any good player the ball, let's say 60% of the time, he's gonna put up good numbers and he does so at an efficient rate. The thing is, if there's five guys on the court, if I have the ball 60% of the time and I'm scoring 80 points per game, I will likely not be doing my guys a lot of fun. Right. I will likely not be getting them involved. They will likely not be improving. They will likely not be finding the rhythm. That is the fact. And the fact is, it shows in the playoffs. There's a reason for one, it speaks for him being overrated. He doesn't perform in the playoffs. But my point is, too, it shows in the playoffs. The fact the competition is raised and he struggles to keep up and make the right play, but he wants to do his thing and keep going at it, it does not work. And he is fantastic at what he does, but he is much too limited in his overall ability to do so. That is exactly what makes him overrated. 
the fact is right now is you're actually comparing Joel and B to consider the greatest center right now of all time, Nikola Jokic. He's the best like, player right now in the league. Cut, cut Jokic out. Because I'm making a lot of points that have nothing to do with Jokic. Dude. No, but we're saying that's that's who he is compared to constantly. And that's why people think he's overrated, which isn't fair to Embiid. No, I I, just, I I mean I mean I can tell you again, my point is literally, guys, how on earth, and I said any of those top five guys, that's exactly what I said. How on earth? Yes, he's putting up 33 points per game. But how on earth, statistically and visually, does that offense perform statistically better and almost look better without him? And I'm not saying they would be better, but that's all I'm saying. If you see this good putting up 33 points per game, he can do it and he's capable factually. Is it necessary? Right. No, it is not necessary. And that is also factual, but he keeps wanting to do it. And there is a lack of of ability to understand the game and adapt to the game, which shows right. in the playoff. The game changes. Teams make adjustments. No, it's the trouble. Historically. Factually, factually, OKC looked better without Shea. Does that make him a bad player for the Thunder? Yeah. You think they look better without Shea? They just uh, put up 100 I, I points. They did. Yeah, okay. So the okay, offense looked a whole lot smoother. It, it's just, it does, like, the offense is going to change when you don't have a 30-point-per-game score. They're going to move the ball around more. It's going to look more fluid. But at the end of the day, when you've got that guy in the game, you are 10 times more dangerous because he could take any shot, any time, and make it. Doesn't and, look 10 times more dangerous. They're not, they're not succeeding in the playoffs. They're Okay, but Embiid is not the only one underperforming in the playoffs. Doc Rivers was trash. James Harden was trash. Tyrese Maxey did not have a yes, good series. Last season. How many how many seasons has uh, Joel Embiid been around? How many times has he gone to the playoffs? In fact, the, the year, like, yeah, three yeah. Do you remember the Hawks series when Ben Simmons Joel Embiid, underperformed? Joel Embiid missed. When Tobias Harris underperformed? Guys, I guys. Think Joel so Embiid. I think we're getting off track. We're getting too heated part, right now. We're getting off track. Part we're of the reason is circles. Part of the reason is why they underperform, though, is because they're not used to Embiid giving them that role. So they're basically cold. So then they're That's like, oh, shoot, Embiid, now I have to. Because Embiid puts up 34 points a game on 50 Exactly. Exactly. That's, That's a exactly the point. That's ridiculous. If you watch basketball and you just consider every single player that scores the most points the best, that's exactly my point. If I get 80% of the touches on the team and I score 60 points, boy, that's great. That means I'm a great scorer and at one on one basketball, I'll be great. Guess what? There's five people on the court. You need all five to win. Hey, you're acting like Harden and Maxi. Harden averaged 20 and 10. Maxi. Average 20 points a game. Part, I mean, Max is averaging like 28 points a game right now. The offense is more fluid and they play better. Which, well, I know, and Embiid is still averaging 32. They're more, and they're more successful. Yeah. The thing is, if you put in a guy like LeBron James, oh, great. Well, okay, let's put in Steph Curry. You put in Luka Doncic, right? You put in these type of guys that are able to score the ball the way Joel can, but they also have a high understanding and ability to adjust to their teams. They're better. That makes them right. better. You have to be able to just you Compared have to, to play one of the greatest players guys. of all time, Steph yeah. Curry and LeBron. Okay, that's why I threw other people in there, and they're all still playing the league right now. Joel Embiid is getting extremely hyped up because he scores more points than those guys. Oh, you I, I, MVP. I, I, that's my point. He's a better defensive player. He's a better defensive player. There, and there, there is no mic drop. Your point makes no sense. But yeah. you gotta move on. You gotta move on. You it's can, a logistical you point. Um. Who is my two? My two is Julius Randle. Um, it's kind of the same argument as Embiid that you had. Um, well, not the same exact argument because he's not the MVP. But, uh, you know, he just doesn't perform in the playoffs. Um, I, I think he's a good player. I think he's solid. He settles for three sometimes. Um, or he settles for bad shots, I should say, sometimes. When he's just such a physical presence and can, to the, and can get to the rim. But, yeah, I mean, he just struggles to be the number two option. Um, I I don't know. His game kind of just disappears in the playoffs a lot, and I mean, and the Knicks have gotten by uh, last year without him because they had Jalen Brunson uh, doing amazing. But I don't know. I don't think he could be number two on a on a really good team. I'm curious. So how come you're able to use that argument for him and not Joel? Because Joel Embiid averages thirty points a game, elite defense, and the team looks. I mean. I, I just explained all my reasons, so I'm not going to keep justifying well, it. Well, uh, and, well, Randall, and Julius Randle does not make the same impact as Joel Embiid, so I don't even start that. Guys, so, guys, we're literally going in circles. We've gone in circles about five times. Yeah, well, I'm at, well, I asked a legitimate question. He made an argument that Embiid has the exact same problem. No, I mean, up. no, no, no. My argument was not the same. I was said Joel Embiid's imp, uh, not impact scoring goes down in the playoffs. 
That's the only thing I compared the two with. But Julius Randle's entire impact goes go away, goes away in the playoffs. He's not a good defender. So, I mean, like, if he's not scoring the ball, he's not effective. And he can't score the ball in the playoffs. Um, I, I mean, I agree with that. I actually thought about putting him on my list, too. I didn't quite have him on there. Um, I definitely agree with that, too. We saw him in the first game of the in-season tournament, too. Horrible shooting. Uh, he has this during the regular season a lot, too. It's not just playoffs to where he underperforms in a game. Um, he did get a bunch of rebounds, though. He does have some other effects on the well. game, I think, as well. But I do agree with the overall uh, take on Julius Randle being very overrated uh, as an overall player in a consistent basis. I'm going to put these facts out there. I'm not making an argument. Joel Embiid, 40% field goal percentage. Talk about Julius playoffs. Randle right now. 50, 23 points per game compared to his 33 points per game dropped by 10 in the playoffs. Um, all of his stats have dropped just like Julius Randle. Those are the facts. Take them how you want. Are we done? Valentin, what are your thoughts? Okay. Um, I don't know. I think he's done pretty good. Uh, there's really, I don't feel like there's any hype around Randall right now this season. Or well, it's not about hype. I, I just well, overrated is about kind of hype. You know, you you're saying this guy this amount of skill, I guess, or valuable. Uh, which yeah. no one's really talked about. Randall, he's actually done a pretty good job, I think, this season. I don't think that's true. Um, he's shooting 27% from the field this year. Um, but, yeah, I mean, so Marvin pointed out, he's, I mean, like I said, he's a big physical presence. He can get boards. He does that well. But his shot just evaporates at times, and, it, and, it, and he doesn't stop shooting, and he doesn't impact the game defensively. Um, so uh, his impact is just very limited. To If he's not scoring, he's not affecting the game a whole lot. Um, That's fair. It's, He's a yeah. solid playmaker half the time, but he definitely needs to, uh, to at least be a reliable shooter or scorer in some regard. If you can't hit a three-ball shot, then he should probably yeah. not be trying as much. Yeah. All right. Who's your number two, Valentin? Uh, I have Rudy Gobert. That man is just overhyped basically every season. Um. He doesn't really bring anything like great for the team, especially for how hyped he is, or like what the saying is for him. I don't know. I feel like well, I, he's every season he's overhyped. Go ahead, Marvin. Um, I somewhat agree because I was thinking about putting him on there, but I do disagree just based off of um last season. I feel like people finally realized he's not, or at least right now, he's not good. He's not he's, worth five. He's not worth three first rounds. He's not worth at all what he was traded five. for. So five. I feel, I feel that you can't put him on this list just because in the past season that hype has basically died and people have actually started to say, yeah, he's kind of being a negative impact for that team. Um, to but, to your point, to your point, one of the best ways or that we try to analyze. It, and compare players by like Joel Randall, kind of those guys that we've talked about before. We talked about the Tatum Luca comparison. Is we we want to see hey how would they do in a different team? How would they do if they were flip flopped? And with Rudy Gobert, we saw exactly that because I think he'd be a great pick. I would have picked him. I would have picked him if I could have, but I just don't think he is overrated right now because we got to see exactly that. We got to see him. Hey, let's put him in a different situation. Let's put him in a new spot. He was aging to be fair too, but he ain't super old guy at all. It wasn't like I mean, he, he got all the hype of the world the season before. That's why he went for that trade value. And then he quickly put in a new situation, new team, showed hey, he's a good defender, he can block shots, he's efficient, score right around the rim, he gets on the board, like he he does what he needs to do as a center. Like like he was extremely overrated. He wasn't this uh, ridiculous center. So as far as that, yeah, but kind of his over hypeness kind of settled itself out when he was finally traded and put in a new situation, which is kind of the best way to see what is the actual value of the player. Well, so I'll always stand on, I think, Rudy Gobert in Utah was an impactful player. I think he was as good as advertised. He was not worth five first-round picks. Don't get me wrong. Um, however, yeah, I can't defend him anymore. He was not – I mean, he was solid last year. You know, he was borderline Yeah, top, he's fine. You know, you know? but – uh. Yeah, he wasn't for, for worth the first or the the five first round picks. He's not worth and the, the players forty five million dollars. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, 
it was a horrible trade for Minnesota. I mean, one of the worst in history. There's no no defending Gobert for that. Um, but in terms of overhypedness, uh, kind of like you said with Randall, I think there's even less people hyping up Gobert at this point. Um, in fact, I um, almost considered putting my underrated list because a lot of people have just completely disregarded him uh, this year. I mean, and the Timberwolves defense is still really good. I mean, or with Gobert on the court, it's really good. Their offense just sucks. Um, but the defense is still there for Gobert. And I think it always will be to a, to yeah. an extent. Yeah, he, yeah, like I said, he's a great player, but he kind of brought down his own downfall to why he really can't be on an overrated list at this point in his career. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like – um, he's kind of in the – oh, I don't want to compare him to Derek Lively because Derek Lively is a rookie. Um, and Derek Lively is not close to Gobert yet. No, I see what you're saying. I think he's in the same type of mold in terms of what he's meant to be is a big who catches lobs and blocks shots. Um and you know the Timberwolves paid for him boards. like he's yeah and get boards but the Timberwolves are paying for him to be you know an elite player. Joel yeah yeah like Joel like to be able to score as a center while playing defense like do it all yeah well my number one are we ready for another fun one See let's it. get into it baby I honestly I I have trouble uh putting him number one two years ago I certainly would have stood behind as number one but I I have to give him respect for improving his game. But Jason Tatum, he is number one overrated. He is consistently – it's gone down a little bit, but he's – he was, what, number three in MVP voting for most of last season. I think that is ridiculous to what he does for that team and how that team how that team is loaded, um, the weapons they have on that team. He has long since been um, one of the most hyped young players, and rightfully so because he's an incredibly talented and gifted scorer. But that hype has gone almost too big. And I think all that has to do with him dunking on LeBron James in his rookie season in a playoff game, him playing for the Celtics, one of the biggest organizations in the league, and for him. And he, he, he's a fantastic sport, puts up great numbers. He's on a he's a well coached team. And number three in MVP is for me, to me personally, that is ridiculous. And two years ago, he had the most turnovers in a playoff series in NBA history. Guess what? He's not a playmaker at all. He does not try to be a playmaker, so that should lead to less turnovers. Um, he has not point guard, which should lead to less turnovers. And that was actually the problem to why he had so many. Because at that point, and he's, I have to give him credit. He's been getting better at this. I hope he continues to get better at this. But he, he, his lack of IQ showed greatly. He would get double teamed, and he had trouble trying to find a guy or trying to dribble out of it. And it really showed. He's a phenomenal scorer. Um, I hope he continues to his game. And a lot of my overrated hype comes from People say he's better than Durant because Durant's older. He's been hurt. I think Durant is a better player. I think Tatum might be a better scorer at this point in his career, but Durant has a better feel for the overall game. And I think Durant is more impactful for any team. If you put him on the Celtics, Durant's helpful, uh, healthy. I think he would be would be quite a different animal on that Celtics team. Um, and in reverse, so it, that's where a lot of my overrate is from. Really, from the MVP, I think top three is ridiculous to what he brings to that team. Um, despite the team being so good, but that's exactly because of how they're built and coached and everything. Well, so first off, I believe he didn't end his top three in MVP at the end of the season either. Yeah, so, um, and when you said Tatum too, I didn't even think about him before, but I think his teammate Jalen Brown is a lot more overrated than Jason Tatum is. So I think saying Jalen Brown would have been a lot more accurate in an overrated list like this than Tatum. Um, but and I mean you did say at the beginning too your your overrated like uh has kind of decreased on him than it was like two seasons ago. You have started to kind of get under him and appreciate what he does and what he is. He's so no, he's I been think, getting better more than anything in my opinion. He's he's so and then even think, this season he's improved his shot. I mean he's twenty five, you know. I mean he was twenty three in that final series. Uh, obviously there was a lot of growth. I mean he wasn't ready. But um, I think he's better than ever this year. Um, he looks so good. I mean, the Celtics look ridiculously good. Yeah, I mean, they do have Porzingis now too, but yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, they they kind of reminds me of the uh, the the year before the Warriors got Durant. How the, like they just I don't know. They just seem they they look really good. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I mean, I somewhat disagree. I mean, I I disagree with him being like number one. But um, I can get I can get how people think he's overrated just because of his past playoff series. 
But then again, he is also just 25. He's not he's not quite in his prime yet. So I think he's he's still getting better at all these things. Um, and for what he's done already in his career, it's pretty special. Yeah, uh, Valen, do you have any thoughts? No. No. <laughs> all right. Um. Well, I guess that brings me to my number one, who we already mentioned. I hinted at him earlier. Lauren said it earlier, but my number one is who we. You guys both had at three in Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, I don't think we really needed get too much into that again kind of already talked about it uh just overvalued and i think his ego is way too big uh, at least right now for his role and it's mm-hmm. what he had to do as a team on a team yeah 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 i mean now we're well, you got number one. Oh yeah me yeah i'm up <laughs> um so you guys i, I mean i don't want to be framed as a laker hater oh boy like i said oh, i am is- it's Austin Reeves, baby. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say Davis. Well, I, I mean, I, I still think Anthony Davis is, you know, top five, three defender in the NBA, so I'm not going to put him overrated. And mind you, this list was created before the season uh, when Austin Reeves was getting a ton of hype. Now the hype has kind of died down. It's had a rough start to the season. Uh, I think that just gives more credence to my pick. Um, yeah, I was about to say, I think that's the biggest yeah. the biggest help to it. Yeah, yeah. Um. I mean, a lot of people, you know, after the Team USA thing, everyone's hyping up. I, I just didn't see, like, an all-star type guy in Austin Reeves. He can be a good number three. Uh, he's a solid guy. Maybe, like, 18-point-per-game score type dude. But people were really putting him in. I mean, we made a video about who's better, Jalen Brunson or Austin Reeves. And it haunts me to this day. Um, but, I mean, yeah. So, I, I think, if anything, my pick uh, – it's is looking it's aging pretty well, but uh what's your thoughts? I, I can't disagree with that, especially like you said right now. I mean, he's horrendous to start the season. Uh obviously small sample size, but again, I mean he's just really bad right now. He definitely hasn't uh caught that win back up. Um he did have that nice crossover on Norman Powell, though. I did enjoy that. Uh, he was ripped. really happy. But overall, uh, he was I mean, falling, dude. He had him. He was already falling. Oh, so he had him on the crossover, but I think yeah. he just made it. Um, it, it yeah. That's why he fell to the ground. But he yeah, was yeah. already losing his balance either way. Yeah, yeah. But overall, I think. I mean, like I said, I think it's a good pick as of where it stands right now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the argument for that, I think, is almost is very similar to Jason Tatum. Um, to give credit to Tatum and Reeves. Um, they're both very young players. They play on extremely uh, kind of media hyped organizations, and they were yeah. able to perform very well in high, right, like in playoff games and in conference final games. And so yeah. I think it's a similar argument. And um, I love Reeves. Uh, I agree. Right now, he might be overhyped, right to an extent. I think similar sense to Tatum, right? He is very right. He's that new guy. He's playing good. He, he may say all that good stuff. Um, I feel I still think he's gonna do better, just like I I believe Tatum. Right? He's he's shown us that he's better, but for the hype he gets, just large focus to Laker, and he has been playing good. And then two, I think this is just saving grace in my opinion. Is this season has not been great for him. He's, he's had a few games, and he shows he can still do everything. Right? He he's a playmaker. He still puts up points. He can shoot the three ball. He can get his own shot, catch and shoot. He still does everything. You still see a lot of stuff you like. But just not a, not efficient, unfortunately. The Lakers have had their own issues. That's a whole nother conversation to, to have but he has that one game he I think he was one for 12 field goals something like that it certainly yeah. is not 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 a good look yeah uh, Valentin your any thoughts or if not your number one um yeah I think it's absurd that we compared Austin Reeves to Jalen Brunson yeah like, Jalen Brunson is honestly on a whole nother level than Austin Reeves it was a low moment in this channel for sure I, right right now I'm not even hating on him because I still mean I said then I still think I still I don't I believe in three seasons five seasons Reeves, I'm not saying better than Brunson but I think Reeves he, just even right now while he's playing bad you can still tell he can shoot the ball he, he can dribble in his own shot he can finish he can get free throws he can make his make, make plays he still has the, the whole thing it's just a matter of can he really put it together um, not like Brunson though the Lakers too yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go with my number one, Fred Van Vliet. He just he can't shoot, man. Especially with how much he's getting paid by the Rockets. Those are not the stats you want. Um, you know, seventeen Who? points for Fred Van Vliet. Oh, I hear. Seventeen points per game, three rebounds, eight assists, about thirty-nine percent shooting. Uh, 
you know, getting paid $200 million over, I don't know how many years anymore. I forgot. It's like five years or six years, something like that. But that is just absurd, man. Especially those staff for that is crazy. I mean, he's playing like Fred Van Vliet. Um, and, I, I mean, I think we all thought the money at the time was ridiculous. I don't really like the fit. I thought they should have gone for, like, a point guard. You know, Fred Van Vliet's more of a shooting guard in a point guard's body. He actually has been kind of diamond this year. I'm not gonna lie. But, yeah, he gets all uh, plays. He's not a bad playmaker at all. Yeah. Um. But yeah. I mean, I. I mean, I didn't like the pickup at the time. Um. I mean, I didn't hate it, but you know, the money was egregious, and I don't know. It was kind of weird, but I, I have no arguments. Um. It's. To, it's I mean, a bad fit. Yeah. Yeah. To get an inconsistent shooter like Van Vliet, right? He's inefficient, <laughs> and he's still averaging less than twenty points per game. And now you take that, you put that with Jalen Green, like another inefficient shooter. It's just a really kind of like, what are you guys doing? Are you guys put all your money into him? Like, you got to be serious. I don't think anyone's overhyping him, except for the Rockets, to be honest. Yeah. But, I mean, that was just, uh, that was, that's just crazy fit. And, uh, yeah, if you're averaging under 20 points per game and you're inefficient, it's, and you're getting that kind of money. Yeah. But I'm not a Rockets fan, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, at least his three-point percentage has improved by 5%. He's almost okay. at 40%. Okay. But overall, I still, I mean, yeah, I agree. I think he's definitely among one of the most overrated in the league right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, Thank you guys for watching. Uh, let us know who your uh, most overrated players are. Let us know who had the worst take. We all know it's Lauren. Uh, we'll see you all next week. Don't deny the facts. Subscribe.